Time now for some sports, and here's Ayo Tunde Balogun. The president has directed that funds should be made available to Team Nigeria for the Olympic Games without further delay. President Mohamed Buhari insists that any official who has no business in Rio should stay at home. President Buhari is asking athletes to be worthy ambassadors while in Brazil for the Olympic Games, which begins on August the 5th. Let me equally assure you that the federal government is really committed to our delegation's successful participation in the Rio Olympic Games and will ensure that funds budgeted for the Games are released without further delay. We are all aware of our nation's dwindling revenue and the current global economic challenges. It is therefore imperative that funds provided for the Games are utilized judiciously. In this regard, any official who has no business at the Games to stay at home to hear, President Mohamed Buhari. Frenchman Paul Le Guin has rejected his appointment as Nigeria coach after he claimed his contractual terms were not met. Reports say Le Guin requested that he come to Nigeria with a support staff that includes an assistant and a goalkeeper trainer. In a swift reaction though, the NFF said though Le Guin was found suitable for the post, during final negotiations he objected to being given a target and also did not wish to live in Nigeria, which was unacceptable to the board. The football governing body insists that several highly qualified coaches would be happy to be named manager of the senior national team of Nigeria. Nigeria has since been without a permanent coach since February when Sunday Olisa walked out on the Super Eagles after claiming his contract has been severely breached. Kelechi Hanacho has been left out of Manchester City's provisional pre-season tour squad. City manager Pep Guardiola has named a 32-man travelling party for the tour to Germany and China. But then the Nigerian teenage sensation is clearly missing. Now, it's not yet clear if this latest development will open up an opportunity for Ihana Cho to represent Nigeria at the Olympics in Rio. City blocked Nigeria's attempts to include Ihana Cho in their Olympic squad, with Guardiola insisting on the striker joining him for pre-season rather than taking part at the Olympics. Russia's participation in the Rio Olympics remained in the balance after the International Olympic Committee said it will explore legal options for banning the country from the Games. The IOC has decided to take disciplinary action against officials mentioned in the WADA report and deny anyone implicated accreditation for Rio 2016. The Court of Application for, for Sport, CAS, is due to rule on an earlier dispute in which the IAAF banned Russia's athletes from the Rio track and field program. The findings of uh, this uh, report uh, show a really shocking and unprecedented attack on the integrity of uh, sport and the Olympic Games. And therefore, uh, the IOC uh, does not hesitate uh, to take uh, all the measures and the toughest uh, sanctions uh, against uh, this uh, behavior. Uh, the, we really appreciate uh, the work uh, being done uh, by uh, Professor uh, McLaren and uh, we will uh, evaluate it, we will uh, work uh, on it and uh, we hope and uh, we fully support uh, his request to uh, continue uh, his uh, work so uh, that he can evaluate uh, all the documents, uh, all the evidence uh, he has or he still may find. Uh, we will uh, have uh, to study the report in uh, detail and uh, we will uh, have uh, to take uh, a very difficult uh, decision also in legal uh, terms. South Korea's national team have promised to bring home lots of gold medals from the Rio Olympics. Hundreds of athletes and officials attended an inaugural ceremony in the Olympic Hall in Seoul, during which the team captain waved a national flag wishing for victory as the athletes chanted, Go for it! Prime Minister Wang kyo An was also present at the ceremony, promising the government's full support. And that's Rapid Sports News. I'm Ayo Tunde. Balogun, the News at 10 continues shortly.
Leaders attending the African Union Assembly of Heads of State and Governments in Kigali have agreed to send regional troops to South Sudan to maintain the peace. The troops will be contributed from Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Sudan and Uganda. They will work alongside a 12,000 strong UN peacekeeping force already in the country but with a stronger mandate. The mission is expected to be similar to the deployment of a 3,000 strong special force that faced the M23 rebels in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2013. When discussions began last week over the deployment of troops, the South Sudanese President Salva Kiir had rejected the thought outright. But the UN says African troops need to be ready to engage in very difficult situations. And the campaign for the presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump has said it has no intentions of firing any member of the team over the controversy surrounding a speech given by Melania Trump last night. News media in the United States had headlined that parts of her speech bore similarities with that of the First Lady at the Democratic National Convention back in 2008. Campaign chairman Paul Manafort denied the allegations of plagiarism, saying, quote, to think that she'd do something like that, knowing how scrutinized her speech was going to be last night, is just really absurd, end of quote. Uh, it talked about her, her uh, coming to America. It talked about uh, the story that uh, is, is focuses on Im immigration and the right way to do it. And uh, it talks about her love of, of the country and how it developed and her love of her husband and how it developed and, uh, and family and the family values. Uh, these are themes that are personal to her, but they're personal to a lot of people depending on the stories of their lives. Obviously, Michelle Obama feels very, very much uh, similar th sentiments towards her family. Uh, you know, the, the fact that the speech itself is being focused on for, as somebody, I think at CBS told me today, 50 words, and that includes ands and thes and things like that, uh, is totally ignoring the facts of the speech itself. The speech was a poignant speech. It was well received by the American people. Uh, there's no, you know, we, we don't believe there's, there's anything in that speech that doesn't reflect her thinking, and we don't think that, uh, and she says that, you know, we're, we're comfortable that, uh, uh, that the words that she used are words that were personal to her. The fact that there are things like care and respect and compassion, uh, you know, you know, those are not extraordinary words. And they, certainly when you talk about family, they're normal words. Now, the Turkish government has suspended more than 15,000 education staff on suspicion they had connections to last week's failed coup. They've been accused of having links to the U.S.-based Islamic cleric Fatullah Gulen, whom the government has accused of masterminding the coup. Prime Minister Bin Ali Yildirim has promised to move against Gulen supporters, telling news media the parallel terrorist organization will no longer be an effective pawn for any country. Turkey's President Tayyip Erdogan had said over the weekend that he'd request Gulen's extradition from the United States. The U.S. says it's received documents from Turkey and is reviewing them to see if they constituted a formal extradition request. And the main news again. Lawmakers at the Benway House of Assembly today exchanged words over the EFCC's probe into the alleged misappropriation of funds worth about 750 million naira allotted for the purchase of vehicles. Also today, the condemnation, well, that trailed the gruesome murder of the paramount ruler of Bokos and three others in Plateau State. Youths in the community staged a protest calling on state authorities to arrest and prosecute the perpetrators. And African leaders have backed plans to deploy regional troops to South Sudan after recent fighting between rival forces left hundreds of people dead. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Ijo Mahkunyato. Good night.